Now, one of the coolest things about Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex is you get to meet real astronauts. Last year, we met John, he was great, so Purge, I thought I'd give you the opportunity to meet the incredible Charlie Walker, a real astronaut, and I'll leave you to it. Enjoy okay. your experience. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> uh, so, what's it, what's it like being an astronaut in terms of uh, uh, space missions? I know there's tons of preparation and, and things like that, but is it is it everything you imagine when you actually get up there? Well, here's the highly credible answer from the incredible Charlie Walker. Um, <laughs> It is a marvelous experience. I don't think there's too many experiences here on Earth that are totally like the preparation for them. Uh, and space flight is certainly like that. NASA is great at doing uh, high quality simulations and preparation and training, usually for months and years in advance of a mission, as is appropriate, very complex activities. But the experience itself is so many things, physical, psychological, intellectual, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, it's uh, it's all remarkable to a depth, a greater depth than you can really get trained to do. So it's like so many other things in life, the first time that you really do something, then you've got the real experience, mm -hmm. and the second and third time you can think about it more deeply, go into aspects of it uh, in fashion that you didn't have the thinking about uh, that to do the first time, or you hadn't had time to do. So. The more experience you get, too, the even deeper into the all the aspects of something, and it's it's just remarkable all the way around. Gotcha. Did you, would you say that you were prepared enough when you went the first time? Like you, you had all the background, but were you still surprised or well, pushed out of your comfort zone? Well, I was prepared enough to do my job, and uh, that was certainly the case. Absolutely prepared enough, but in terms of the aspects of knowing what it's going to feel like, mm -hmm. just knowing the, uh, the emotional sense of uh, the, the power of the experience. No, no, I didn't have that because I yeah. didn't have the experience yet. Now, I'd heard from astronauts, of course, so uh, we talked to each other after flights, most certainly, and I heard them say, oh, I mean, just things like I've been telling you right now. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, it's uh, you know, the training is not quite giving you the experience. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. But then you get into it and it's like, oh, that's what they're talking about. Wow. Yeah, you don't really understand it until you experience it you yourself. You don't understand it. And can't we say that about virtually everything in life? Yeah, so. that's, that's really true. Um, so your job was a payload specialist, is that correct? That was my title. My job was doing uh, specialized research and development. In my case, enhanced ways, better ways to make medicines and pharmaceuticals without gravity. The only place to do that is out in orbit. Because you just don't really know how it's going to work until you have the testing environment, right? Because it's well, a different scientific setting. Well, we had a good idea. I mean, we wouldn't have spent the money doing uh, the preparation and the investment in that as a private company here on Earth if we didn't have the mathematical models that said, well, if you take gravity out, then it'll work like this. Mm -hmm. So the math told us the way things should work. But I mean, should work doesn't get you the medicines into the pharmacy. Were there any uh, like try it firsthand and yes to demonstrate that sure enough our models were right and it actually does work like this. Were there any like big surprises that came as a result? Like anything that really sticks out to you that was not any different? basic, not any surprises to the basic anticipated um, uh, processing and the results, but certainly there were surprises in terms of well the software didn't work right on this <laughs> test, so I got to reprogram it. Had to do that in flight. Oh, mm. that uh, that filter failed. It's, it's seized up. It's got too many bubbles in it. I've got to replace it. So literally have to change out pieces of equipment. Mm -hmm. I had some spare parts along because in the testing on Earth, they had shown the, uh, the, uh, the that they would often fail in that regard, even here on Earth. So had spare parts. So it's those kinds of surprises, but anticipated surprises mm -hmm. that I had to deal with out there. So it's like engineering, troubleshooting, that it's, kind of thing, problem exactly, solving. Exactly, exactly. It's research and development. It's trying out the things you think uh, you know how they'll work in order to get to a planned objective and making it so. So uh, in your opinion, what do you think the, the best way to get a uh, new generation of people into spaces? Well, stay informed about what's going on now. Get yourself up to speed on the ideas and the plans that not only NASA has, but private companies. Uh, just to mention a few with no particular emphasis on either one, but uh, Mr. Musk's SpaceX, or uh, Mr. Bezos' Blue Origin, or Mr. Bigelow's Bigelow Aerospace, or Axiom, any number of others that are doing things 
on Earth in preparation for doing bigger things on the way to space or in space. So stay tuned in to what's going on and get excited about it because I really think it is truly a, a important, a very truly significant aspect of human endeavor from this point into the, the far, far future. In my mind, I equate it to human adventure of exploring the Earth going back centuries and even millennia. Once upon a time, it was virtually impossible for we human beings to over, to a cruise across, to move across an ocean. Mm -hmm. Well, today I think of the ocean of space as the similar kind of barrier to our progress as, as living uh, thinking creatures. But we're, with technology, we have the, uh, the ability to move across this ocean of space and to use it to, uh, to real benefit. And that's what we should do. Now we're human beings, so I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, shielding my eyes from reality and believing that we're only gonna do all the best things that we human beings do out there. We'll make mistakes and there's some of us that just won't do the right things out there. It's human behavior, but that shouldn't keep us from going and trying and advancing uh, outward into space. And we'll do that. People will live in space and work in space, well, already. Space station orbiting the Earth, there's six people living and working there all the time for benefit right back down here on Earth. They bring all the results back there. There's no way to spend a shekel out in space yet to bring it all back to Earth. But as we explore, we'll get a better chance to do that. More people up in space, more people learning, more people experiencing more, it. More people doing the right things, occasionally the wrong thing, but let's keep an eye on each other and uh, tell each other when that's not quite right and mm -hmm. fix it, make it so. So yes, more people out in space doing things for human benefit back here on Earth and eventually on other worlds. There will be settlements on other worlds. There'll be human built uh, uh, settlements in open space. Those kinds of things will happen. And uh, if, if young people don't get excited about those kinds of prospects, I don't know what you get yeah. excited about. Yeah, that's pretty exciting, I agree. That's cool. Thanks so much for spending your time with us and answering some of our questions. We appreciate it. My great pleasure. Always uh, want uh, everybody to know how it really is in this challenging thing that we're all about called space exploration. Well, thank you very much, Charlie. Appreciate it. Cheers. My pleasure. I had only one question for you. I believe astronauts are the best of us. You know, you are amazing the things that you got to do to be able to go to space. You, in my mind, are the ideal human being. Would you wear this shirt, is my question. You is know, it a good shirt? I would have to wear uh, one with different cats on it because my wife has two of those and I don't want to wear the same shirt she does. Heck yeah, I told you, son. Apex human being would wear this shirt. Thank you, sir. <laughs>